Hello chemistry people, Amy here. What, I what I've got planned for today is an explainer for 8.3 of the SL chemistry course, looking at the pH scale. So I'm just going to pause for a moment and flip over to OneNote so I can take our notes. So the pH scale is probably something that you have some exposure to whether you've got a um, fish tank at home that you do tests on to make sure that the water's safe for your pets, or if you're growing plants, or if your parents have indigestion, you've probably got some awareness of the pH scale already. Today, we're going to connect that with the mathematical facts behind what is pH. So we're going to talk about the pH scale in general. We're going to talk about how we calculate pH and, how, and a couple of sample questions. This pH meter and universal indicator, I have recorded an experiment video looking at um, some different indicators, including universal and a pH meter. So there's an experiment video for that. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about those guys in this video because I've got the other one there for you. So Let's do a five second rewind and look back at Bronsted Lowry theory of acids. Oh, I have lost the ability to spell today. Theory of acids and bases. Remember, this theory is all about proton transfer. Oh, my. so acids have higher concentrations of hydrogen and bases have lower concentrations of H+. Remember these square brackets? Mean concentration. Okay, so we need a way to talk about concentrations of protons in a really handy sort of shorthand. A lot of the time, the concentrations of acids and bases, sorry, the concentration of hydrogen in acids and bases is in the range of 10 to the negative decent sized number. So we could always refer to it in that way, but this gets deeply inconvenient. They're not numbers that we sort of mentally connect with. So the pH scale was invented in order to have an easier mental connection to the numbers that surround the concentration of protons. So to calculate, so sorry, pH, there is some fancy French translation, but the way I remember it, it's the power attached to the concentration of H plus. So it is the power of hydrogen. So if I have a concentration of H plus that's equal to 0.01, mole per dm3. My pH, and this is our formula, it's the negative log, and that's a log 10, concentration of H plus. If you remember from maths, logs are a way for us to work out the power of something. So neg log 0.01, you put it in your calculator. So neg log 0.01 gives us 
a pH of two. Now, a couple of things to note. pH, because it is a power, has no units. The other thing I would like to talk about quickly is significant figures when it comes to these guys. When you're doing um, a normal sort of scientific notation, let's say it's 1.01 .01 by 10 to the neg 3. This 10 to the neg 3 is not significant. It's only this 1.01 .01 that gives it those three significant figures. When you look at a pH, because it's derived from a log, so let's say instead of that being two exactly, it's 2.356. This two is effectively a 10 to the something. Remember, logs are derived from powers. So the number in front of my decimal place is not significant. Only these numbers at the end are significant. So this would be a 3SF number. So let me restate. Because pHs are derived from logs, only the numbers after this, only the digits after the decimal point are significant. So a pH of 1.21 would be a two sig fig number. Okay, so that is a slight step away. So how do we calculate pHs? on a day-to-day -day basis, well, not day-to-day -day for most people, but for chemistry people, absolutely. At SL, you will only be asked to calculate the pH for strong acids and bases. Now, I'll get into an exact definition of what strong acids and bases are later, but for our purposes, if I have a concentration of HCl is equal to 2 mole per dm3. That is identical to saying that the concentration of H plus is 2 mole per dm3. Let's now work out the pH of this solution. So the pH of this solution would be neg log concentration of H plus, which means that is going to be neg log two, which means that neg log two gives us minus 0 0.30. So that's how we calculate for a strong acid. Now, most of the time you'll be given HCl. The other option is something like nitric acid. So let's have, let's have a concentration of nitric acid of 0 0.25 mole per dm3, which means that the concentration of H plus is equal to 0 0.025 mole dm minus three. So pH is equal to neg log 0 0.25. Neg log 0.25 gives us 0 0.60. Remember, pHs do not have units. I've just expressed these to two significant figures, and while that's appropriate for the nitric, it isn't for the hydrochloric. So that's for strong acids. Strong bases, we need to go through an extra step. But before I get on to that, I just want to double check how I'm going.
against here. So I've talked about pH is neg log H plus. Let's talk about, um, okay, let's talk about how I go from, so this is always going concentration to pH, concentration to pH. Let's go the other way round and go from, actually I want that line, pH back to concentration. So let's say that I have a solution of HCl and I measure that the pH is equal to 3.15. I want to work out my concentration of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so we know that pH is equal to neg log concentration of H plus. So 3.15 equals neg log H plus. I multiply both sides by negative one. So I have minus 3.15 equals log conch H plus. <coughs> so I power both sides to get rid of the log. So 10 to the minus 3.15 equals conch H plus. So I go, where's my 10? Sorry, I'm talking to my calculator. I'm trying to find, there we go. Oh, no. 10 to the negative 3.15 gives us a concentration of H plus equal to 0 0.00071, oh no, 708 mol dm minus 3. Therefore, concentration of HCl is equal to Let's put it like this, 7.08 by 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4 mole dm minus 3. In general, the relationship between pH and concentration of H plus can be expressed can be worked out using these two formulae. So pH is equal to neg log conch H plus. And if I want to work out H plus, it is equal to 10 to the negative pH. Those are two of the three key pieces of information you need in order to calculate, um, do the calculations for this unit. Okay, so we've talked about pH is 10 neg log H plus and H plus is 10 to the negative pH. What this means is that if I go from a pH 1 to a pH 2 to a pH 3. Let's express this in terms of hydrogen ion concentration. So this is in terms of pH. So my conch H plus would be 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 2, 10 to the negative 3. If I change pH by one, I'm changing my concentration of H plus by times 10. So one pH unit is 10 times conch. What that means is if I take a pH one solution. 
So I take 10 cm3 of it and then I add distilled water to make it up to 100 cm3. This solution would then be pH 2. You can see this type of dilution, even though it wasn't quite successful, in the experiment video that I mentioned earlier. Um, I will, if I can work out how to get YouTube to connect two videos together, I will get YouTube to do that at the end of this video. Okay, so I keep going back here because I don't want to miss anything. A change of one pH unit represents a tenfold change. Yes, I have talked about that. We have also solved problems using pH and H+. Let's talk in general about what the pH scale talks about. So, pH, pHs range on a scale from negative one, usually, through to 14. You might have heard in the past that it goes on a scale between 1 and 14, but over here earlier, we calculated something that has a negative pH. If we've got a strong concentrated acid, we can end up with negative pHs. Okay. So pHs range on this scale between 1 and 14, where 7 is neutral. So a pH 7 <coughs> is neutral. So all of the acids and bases that we have in our environments fall somewhere on this scale. So rain, and this is natural rainwater, has a pH of about 5.6. We'll talk about that in 8.5, which is about acid deposition. Something like bleach, like what I used in my kitchen video, that has a pH up at about 13 to 14. So let's call it 13. <clears throat> Something like vinegar has a pH of about 3, which means it's 100 times, because this is two and a bit pH steps, this is times 100 less... So the acid in vinegar is 100 times more concentrated in terms of H plus ions than the H plus ions in rainwater. <coughs> okay. So this pH scale from 1 to 14 or negative 1 to 14 as I've done it, this is useful for one general thing that I would like you all to be doing. Whenever you finish an acid-base question where you are asked to calculate pH, the last question I want you to ask is, does this number make sense? So if you calculate pHs and come out with a number of 20-something, that number does not make sense. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> if you calculate the pH of something and it comes out with a pH of 5, but the question is asking about a base, no, that doesn't make sense. So, from pH 7, everything above 7 is a base. Everything below 7 is an acid. Now, when we say acid or base, we are not necessarily talking about something that will shred your skin or whatever. We could be talking about, as I've said, vinegar. We talk, could be talking about rainwater. 
it's very rare outside of a lab to find something that is exactly pH 7. Most things fall either in the acid camp or the base camp. Performing this logical check at the end of questions and doing it as a force of habit can be really powerful in an exam situation. So rather than having to sit down and recalculate every single question, because you might not have time for that, if you can just do a, is this number logical and check, that can be really helpful to narrow down the questions you might want to have a go at a second time. So pH values distinguish between acidic, neutral and alkaline solutions. Let's talk about what water does and how we can start doing calculations with hydroxide ions. So, the IB says that SL people don't need to know this, but I think it's really helpful to understand where this comes from. So, in water, at 25 degrees C, let's stick at 25 degrees C for now, this reaction can happen. So H2O liquid is in an equilibrium with H plus aqueous and OH minus aqueous. This happens completely naturally. Now, if I write an equilibrium expression for that, it's going to be products, well, concentration of products over concentration of reactants. But this number is huge, which means that <clears throat> regardless of whether I'm in, regardless of what temperature I'm at, this number is going to be ridiculously small. So one thing that we can do to help simplify the maths is we assume that this concentration remains constant. So what that means we can do is instead of doing a KC, we can do something called a KW, which is just concentration of H plus concentration of OH minus. Now, there is a table in the um, data book, and I'm just leaning over so I can look at it. It is section 23 that shows the, K, the value of KW at different temperatures. At SL, we only do at 25 degrees C, which is 298 Kelvin. At those temperatures, because remember KC is temperature dependent, therefore KW will be temperature dependent. At 25 degrees C, the value of Kw, because it's a constant, is 10 to the minus 14. That's its value. Technically, in the data book, I think it is given as 1.00. So let's do that so I've got my sig figs. 1.00 by 10 to the negative 14. What does that mean we can do? What that means is if I am told I have a solution of sodium hydroxide that, whose concentration is, I don't know, 0 0.85 mole per dm3, I can work out the pH. So just like with my acids, my strong acids, I could assume that my concentration of H plus was equal to my concentration of acid. With strong bases like my sodium hydroxide, what I can assume is that my concentration of hydroxide 
is equal to my concentration, oh, equal to my concentration of the, of the entire base. So my pH wants concentration of H plus, but I only have concentration of OH minus. So I use this fact that 10 to the minus 14, well, 1.00 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus. So for our purposes with this question, I divide both sides by OH minus. So concentration of H plus is going to equal 1.00 by 10 to the negative 14 divided by 0 0.85. So let me get that into my calculator. So one times 10 to the neg 14 divided by 0.85 equals 1.18 by 10 to the negative 14 mole per dm3. Okay, so now I've got my concentration of H plus, I can work out pH. So pH is neg log H plus. So if I go neg log answer, sorry, I talk to my calculator as I'm putting numbers in, that gives me a pH of 13.929419. Let's double check our sig figs. So I have two sig figs here and three sig figs here which means that my answer has to be to two sig figs. Remember, these numbers before the decimal point do not count as significant when we're talking about pHs. So this would be a pH of 13.93. Does this number make sense? Remember, bases, are between 7.1 and 14. And this is a concentrated solution of a strong base. Let's do one more of these before we call it a day. Let's look at a concentration of... Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to think. Um, lime water, calcium hydroxide. Okay, so I have quite a dilute solution of calcium hydroxide. The thing you need to note with this is that this is OH2, which means I have two hydroxide ions here, which means that my concentration of OH minus is going to be two times my concentration of calcium hydroxide, which is equal to 0 0.10 mole per dm3. 10 to the neg 14 is equal to OH minus H plus, which means that concentration of H plus is going to be 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0 0.10. So concentration of H plus is going to equal 1.0 by 10 to the neg 13. Okay. So pH is equal to neg log H plus, which is neg log, well, I know what it's going to be, but um, <laughs> neg log um, 
10 to the power of neg 13 gives me a pH of 13. Does this number make sense? As I've said, base pHs are between 7.1 and 14. And this is a reasonably concentrated solution of hydroxide. So I'm going to see a very high pH, which is what I see. Now, common misconceptions. Let's do a couple of common misconceptions before I call it a day. So common misconception one, and it's just one of those things that you're going to need to keep an eye on. High pH is saying that it has a low concentration of H+. So as pH increases, acidity decreases. Now, that's one thing for you to remember as I'm talking about it now. When you're stressed in an exam scenario, it can be super easy to forget. So make sure that you remember that high pH is saying that you've got low H+, which means that it is more basic. If you have low pH, what that implies is that you have a high concentration of H+, which means that it is more acidic. Another common misconception is when you, so one thing that you need to keep in mind, H plus is the same thing as H3O plus for our purposes here. I can do calculations of concentration of H3O plus and have that have give me the same numbers as pH. Okay, so let's double check I've done this. So we've talked about the ionic product constant, which is this Kw equals 10 to the minus 14. And we've calculated OH minus to H plus to pH. You will not be assessed on that. I've only talked about strong acids and bases. That's because those are by far the easiest to calculate. There are extra steps we can do for weak acids and bases, and I will talk about them. I have explained that Kw is temperature dependent. You don't need to know how it is temperature dependent just yet. And I've mentioned that you can use H3O plus instead of H plus. Okay. So thank you for that. Hopefully that has given you a bit of a, um, a head start on chapter, sorry, topic 8.3, looking at the pH scale. Make sure that you have a scientific calculator. So whether it's one of these guys or whether it's one of the big GDCs, you can use either in your paper two exam. Make sure you've got one of these because the way the iPhones do, or any of the phone calculators, the way you key logs into them is around the wrong way. I want you to practice using one of these guys so that when you get into your exam, you know how to put logs into a calculator. You don't have time to stress about how do I use a calculator while you're doing your exam. Start from now using a scientific calculator. Okay, that brings us to the end. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I shall see you next time. Bye.